What is going on? All of you growers and smokers out there. Easy Breezy here, coming at you guys with another video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be making some liquid cultures. And this is going to be a really good video. This is going to be the simplest, easiest method you could find there out on the internet of how to make it. Um, so, basically, uh, what we're going to want to do to get started is, I like to always, of course, prepare with gloves. Um, we're going to need a couple things. Uh, you're going to need a weight uh, or a way to, uh, to weigh, weigh things, I guess. You're going to need a scale. That's what I'm trying to say, I guess. Uh, you're going to need some distilled water. It's preferred distilled water, but you can use your, your regular sink water. Um, it's more preferred, too, if you have filtered water, if you could use that. And you're going to need some honey or um, light corn syrup. Um, yeah, light corn syrup. Uh, sorry guys, I had, to, I had to think for a second of what it was called. So, we're going to be using honey for this method, as that's the only thing I have actually. I don't have any uh, light corn syrup. Make sure you get light corn syrup too. Um, so, what we're going to need to get started here is, of course, a jar. Um, and... Um, uh, of course, spores. I think that's it. Now, here comes the fun part. Of course, I'm using some S-Pro alcohol to sterilize my hands before I start jumping too far into this. And I really should start scripting out my videos more or leave bullet point list because I'm completely all over. It's like, what, 2 in the morning, I think? Um, so, let's, let's get right into this. Sorry, my table's a little bit of a mess. I just got done filming the ultimate mushroom grill guide. Um, so this is kind of left over from the scene that I had from it. So anyways, let's get right, let's just jump right into it. All right, so first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up our scale and we're gonna turn it on. And here is 150 milliliters of distilled water. And um, let, me, uh, let me take this lid off this jar real quick, throw it on the scale. Perfect. We're going to throw it on the scale and we're going to tear it out. Perfect. All right. So now let's talk about ratios. So when you're doing liquid cultures, you want to have a 4% uh, a ratio between what you're using to feed the, the spores with and uh, into your water solution. So basically what I'm trying to say is we're using 150 milliliters of water and 4% of 150 milliliters is six grams. Am I right on that? Is my math right? I think my math is right. Um, six grams. And the way you would find this out, and I don't even have a calculator in my house and I'm using my phone to record. So um, you would take 150, multiply that by 0 0.04 and you would get some number uh, like 6.00000000 or, or something crazy like that. And the six is how many grams of the honey or the the uh, the light corn syrup you would add. So um, I believe 400 milliliters, if you were to use 400, would be approximately 16 grams. Um, if my math is right, I'm going to check my math after I do this and, uh, either you'll see something on the screen that says, Hey, I was wrong or Hey, no, I, I won't add anything. If I'm right, you won't see anything. If I'm wrong, you'll see the correction. Um, so this is what we're going to start off with. And, um, so let's just get right into it. My scale turned off for some reason. Uh, let's turn that back on. Let's just jump right into it. Oh, and another thing, too, that is um, recommended that you have is something glass like a marble. Um, and that will be used later on as our culture starts to grow, um, as, uh, as the spores start to germinate. Uh, we will use that to mix it up. I don't have that. I don't have marbles here. Um, I pre preferably use something glass uh, as it doesn't have any, uh, any types of metals in it or anything like that. Um, you could use a stir bar, but, uh, marbles are more, uh, 
in stock, I guess you could say. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Let's just, let's open this up. Do I have to open? This is a brand new bottle of honey. I do have to peel this off. Oh, I love honey. Honey is amazing. Very, very good for you, ladies and gentlemen. So let's grab our six grams of honey. And I'm trying to watch the counter on it. I know you can't see it. And it's important too when you're doing this that you don't go over 10% of the threshold. That's why I'm I'm not too too worried if my math is off. Alright, so perfect. So we got 6.1 grams. Let me see if I can show you guys that really good. Oh my god, the lighting is so bad on that. You're going to have to take my word for it. It's 6.1 grams right there of the uh, the honey. And we're going to take our distilled water, 150 milliliters, and we're going to pour it right on top. Perfect. And now we're going to put our lid on. And before you get too far into this, um, if you're using a bigger jar or something like that, you're going to want to put your holes in it. I don't like to use big jars. I'm going to give this a little shake. Try to get everything moving around in there. Get it all mixed up very nicely. That's the thing about the real honey. That's how you know it's real. It's pretty sticky. Pretty sticky stuff. Um, but yeah, like I was saying too about that, the 10% threshold, if you go over 10%, like say you use more than whatever 10% of uh, 6 grams would be, um, then they will not germinate. It, is, it works the same way around at the other end. If you are 10% lower, then obviously it, it won't have enough food to feed on. Um, so now that we got this nicely shaken up, Next step is to pressure cook. Now you're going to want to pressure cook this at 15 PSI for about 15 minutes. Um, so it doesn't take long. It's not nearly as long as making substrate for your mushrooms or anything like that. Now, if you don't have a pressure cooker, of course, you could always try the boiling method. Uh, it's not recommended, but you can try it. And uh, results may vary. If you're if you're gonna do the boiling method, I recommend that you leave on uh, you leave your cap with no holes in it. And the way you can tell it's pressure cooked is if the top stays down. When you take it out, if it stays down, then you know it's been successfully pressure cooked. Uh, if it's not, then well, obviously it's not pressure cooked. That's another reason too. I like to uh, not drill holes in these, so I know 100% for sure. So I'm gonna put these in the pressure cooker for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes, and I will meet you guys back then. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are finally back after all of that pressure cooking and letting the jar cool down a bit. And as you can see, hitting the top, it is completely sealed, which means we have successfully pressure cooked this jar. Um, anyway, so now, if you're using a jar like mine where you didn't punch any holes in the top of it, now comes the question, well, how do I inoculate this? And the simple uh, answer to that is, of course, we'll punch a hole right through it. So, here's a cotton swab that I've just pre-sterilized, or, or I got my alcohol on it or whatever. It's 3 in the morning now, I think. I don't know. I'm tired, guys. Uh, so, basically, what we're going to do is just going to write in this... Little ring party right here. We're gonna take our cotton swab, and we are gonna uh, just swab right around there. Make it nice, and we're gonna let that air dry. I checked the math too. Uh, I was correct. So, uh, four percent of one hundred and fifty is six, and um, so that was correct math. So six grams of um, whatever you are using in that is completely dried now. Um, so I was right on that. You can take my word for it. So I have this nail that I've also pre-sanitized. If you could see the little wetness on this glove over here, that is what that's from. And here is uh, some, uh, some pliers that have also 
well, as best as I could, then sterilize. So what we're going to do is just place this right in the middle, place this right on top, and give her a good little whack. Maybe we can hear a hiss. Probably not, but maybe. Let's see. All right, I doubt you guys actually heard that, but I did. Gotta make that hole a little bigger. All right, that looks, uh, we can probably get a needle in there. All right, so now that we got our hole in there, uh, next comes the best question. Let's try to get some of that water off from there. With my hand, of course. Perfect. That looks good to me. So now, of course, we are going to grab our syringes. Syringes. And uh, I've already taken the liberty of shaking it up. Let me let me try to be a good videographer, whatever you want to call them. And show you guys the spores. I've shaken them up. But I'll give them another shake again. This is a brand new syringe. So uh, no special requirements to uh, sanitize this. Um, if you're using a, a used needle, of course, um, you're going to want to, the best method for sterilizing that is with flame. But um, We're also using a brand new needle, too. So, you might be asking yourself, easy breezy, what is, how many cc's do I use of this? And uh, the general answer for that is about four um, about four will, will generally get you what you need um, this didn't go on very straight well it'll have to do um, I, we're gonna use about four cc's of this uh, so let's just throw right in no stalling no more stalling let's stick it right in and push. Perfect. And I, of course, I'm going to keep this needle for later on, so I'm just going to seal it right back up without stabbing myself. Take this off and grab my plunger, put it right back on. And there are so many spores in the syringe, I honestly could probably fill it right back up with distilled water. I probably won't. I'll probably use it for various other purposes. But, um, and after that, of course, you're going to want to throw your micropore tape right over the top of that hole. So we can still allow gases to escape and such. And when you put it on, you're going to want to press down around the hole and make sure it's completely sealed right in there. And uh, if you want to, you can date it and everything like that. And, um, yeah, that's that's about it, guys. That's probably the easiest way you could do it. And uh, you should start seeing signs of life uh, for a few days or so. So, if you guys like this type of content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, keep on growing. Keep on smoking, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. See you later.